Hi guys, let's head on over to M119. Today we're going to draft a shirt and it's going to utilize um, a lot of the techniques that we went over this week. And I'll show you a little flat of the shirt that we are drafting as soon as we get over there. So it's going to have a so have some dart manipulation, some seam manipulation, a button placket, and a flat little Peter Pan collar. So let me just show you what it looks like. Come on, come on. And we'll wait forever to open a small JPEG. Thanks, Windows. There it is. So we're going to be drafting this shirt. You see it has no sleeves, so what we're going to do instead of the sleeves is we're going to create armhole facings. And we have a little flat collar here and a button-down placket right here. Two darts on the front and a princess seam on the back. So let's go ahead and open up Optitex. and open up our shirt sloper. And here we are. So this was our sloper. So let's take a look at the front first. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and do our darts first. We'll make these two darts. So we don't have a waist dart. We have a side dart and a shoulder dart, okay? You see, they're not pointing all the way to that apex because, of course, we don't want them in our finished version. So let's do that first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my cut piece tool, keyboard shortcut C, and cut out that dart. Okay, now I don't need that little piece anymore, so I'm going to take it out and delete it. And I can go ahead and if there's any dart remnants left, I can delete that as well. Now let's take a look at the drawing and see where those darts are. Now let's say that this dart is two inches underneath the armpit and that this dart is centered in the middle of our shoulder seam. Okay, so what I can do is I can make sure that I'm going from a point that is two inches below my armpit. Now I can do this directly with the cut piece tool. I don't have to bother with adding a point or anything else, but what I do want to do is just to make sure I'm going to turn the grading of this point off. Let's make sure we get the right box popped up. Right click, go to attributes. Okay, so I'm not going to be having that point mess up any of my measurements. So I'm going to directly cut, and again, I want it two inches below that point. So I'm going to hold my measurement box and get the point attributes box up, or the measurement box. And this, of course, is my next point. And look, I was very close, wasn't I? Now I'm going to cut directly to the dark tip. Okay, don't need seam allowance yet. I can move this out a little ways, just if I want, just to see, it's been cut. Now I'm going to also cut my next dart, or where my next dart is going to be before I rotate. So I'm gonna cut my piece, and now I want this to be in the middle of this line. So I'm gonna use my proportionate value when my point attributes box pop up, instead of my absolute, and 0.5.5, Again, it should be even here, so that looks good, and okay. And we'll cut down to the dart tip, alrighty. Now I have one, two, three pieces. 
I'm going to keep this as is and start to rotate. I can go ahead and first things first, join up the dart legs of my original dart. So let me go ahead and do that using my join piece tool or keyboard shortcut J. And I'm going to join it at the dart tip. Now again, we might need to clean up, but we'll see. Okay, looks good. All right, looks pretty good. Now I'll probably clean this up a little bit down here um, uh, once we're done and curve it so it'll be nice and smooth. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my Rotate Piece tool, keyboard shortcut R, or in your rotation, here, let me move this out a little bit so again. Our first piece right here, our first tool right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it, and that's parallel with my shoulder cut, so I'm just going to kind of move it. So. Okay, we'll see how that looks. So that the triangle shapes that I open up from the side seam and the shoulder seam are about the same. And that looks about the same, pretty good. If you don't want to eyeball it, you can always measure the dart width. And they should be relatively the same, so that is uh, 2.19. I'm gonna look for a similar measurement down here. Okay, pretty good. A tenth of tenth of an inch is fine. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and protect the piece, and I'm actually going to clean this up as I go, as I do my new draft. So I'm going to select this, hold shift to do both of them at the same time, and protect both of the pieces. Okay. So I'm going to now use my draft tool to draft my new shape. Nope, I do not want to remove the protection. And I'm just going to disable this for right now. Because again, we're not doing it by measurements, we're doing it by our template. We've already done our measurements. If you want to keep in a nice point for the dust bus point, you can, or you can go all the way down to the hem. It's up to you. And here I'm going to curve this point off. So we get a little bit of a smoother waistline. And yes. Okay, if you did it correctly, you should get a new piece to pop up. I am now done with these pieces. I don't need them anymore. So I'm going to select them and delete them. Do remember to um, delete after. Actually, hold on. Before we do that, I got a little hasty because I still need to know where that bust point is when I put in my darts. So I'm going to move this back over top. And let's put in that those dart points first. And again, if you won't need to hold shift down to be able to move it, swing it around. Now I'm not going to go all the way down here, right? I'm going to go a little bit above so I don't get that pointy nipple syndrome. Okay? Now I might want to shift that a little bit. It wanted to snap to that line so it's not pointing directly toward my apex but we can shift the dart tips afterwards. And I can show you how to do that. So let me just click right there. Again, not going all the way to the bus point. Now let's zoom in real close. And what I'm going to do to shift those dart points so they're pointing a little bit closer here and they didn't, they wanted to snap to that leg. I'm gonna go back to my dart tool and I'm going to click on the very tip of the dart. Well, no, I don't want to. I want this piece, the one that's not protected. Uh, come on now. Okay, if that is happening, select the solid piece first. Sometimes that helps coax it in the coax it in the right direction. Okay, fine. We're going to do something different because Optitex is being a little bit
temperamental. So I know I just want to shift it over a little bit and I can move it back to check it. So go back to my dart tool, click on the tip, and whatever it says here is fine. It's going to shift it over a little bit more, so I'm just going to shift it back this way. So we click it once, bring it out. This one we just needed to nudge over and then click again to drop it down. Okay, so I'll move it back to see how good I did. Move it back over here. And let's zoom in. It looks pretty good. Yeah, looking pretty good. Close enough over here. So now we can get rid of those original template pieces. And do please um, get rid of your template pieces. It's very important. You never want to uh, hand in a finished pattern or send out a finished pattern with stray pieces. Okay. Now I have a few more things to do, so I'm not going to worry about um, you know relabeling and regraining yet. What I want to do first is I want to build out my button placket. So let's look back here. So we got our darts in the right places. Excellent. Now let's go ahead and do our button placket. Okay. Now, if you remember, we need for this type of button placket, we need to extend the center front out because the buttons are always placed on the center front. And depending on how much, how big our buttons are, uh, will depend on how much we send or, or extend out our um, button placket. So let's say that these buttons are going to be small. They're pretty small, right? So maybe they're only going to be about a half an inch in diameter. That means they're going to be. Uh, a quarter inch in radius. So if this is only a half an inch, we want a little bit, let's say uh, another quarter inch on either side to pad out, give a little bit of space between the edge and the edge of the button. That means my entire button placket is going to be one inch in width. Now, let's remember what our rule is for extending our button placket, uh, or making an extension to our center front to adapt, uh, adapt to a button placket. So I know how wide I want my button placket to be. I want it to be one inch. So what do we have to do? We have to multiply that by 1.5, which gives me the width plus another half of the width. So 1 times 1.5, of course, is 1.5. So I know that I need to extend my button placket an inch and a half. All right, pretty easy. So let's grab our Extend in Parallel tool up here, or keyboard shortcut Shift-P, and go right down this nice line. Again, working in a clockwise manner. So you want to go from the top, center front neck to center front waist and we're going to extend it by 1.5. Okay? Now, I also want to know where my center front is. So I'm going to go back and add a point on contour that is one and a half inches from that end, uh, that edge that I just made. So this is going to be my center front marker. Okay? And we can make those grading points. And we can also put a little notch there. It's a good place for a notch to be. So add notch or keyboard shortcut N. 
And now that we made the point, we can just, just sort of click. Now you can make the notches and adjust it in here as well. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go up here and get the drop down menu by hitting the little arrow next to the add button tool and go straight to add several buttons. We're going to click on that. I'm going to go down and click start at the beginning, click at the end, and we get our measurement box right here. And I said it's going to be half an inch, so the radius is a quarter of an inch. And let's see how many buttons I did here. Now this might be, we might run into a little problem because I didn't really measure too well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay? So let's see how it looks with 14. Yeah, that looks fine. That looks about accurate. And uh, that's all we have to do. So we have the correct size and the correct placement. And I don't have any sticking out above or below, so I can leave these um, empty around zero and hit OK. And then there are all my nice little buttons. Fantastic. Now, um, I also want to put the notch, sorry I forgot a notch, if you remember from the other video, we want to put a notch where we're going to fold this backwards to create the button placket. So I'm going to add another notch here and I'm going to do it uh, without doing a point, just so I can show you. Remember this is going to be one inch from the edge there. So we'll click that in and one inch. To my, well, hold on, no, sorry, it's my previous point. Oh, and I don't want to <laughs> do it in the proportion. Sorry, guys. There we go. That's proper. So now I know where I fold it back, where the center front is, where all my buttons are going to be placed. Hurrah. And that's all I really need to do for my button placket, except for create my interfacing piece. So I'm going to do piece new piece, create rectangular piece, and I'm going to put in my button placket width, which was one inch, the overall width, and my length. Now what I should have done is taken a quick measurement here. Now I believe it's 14 and a half, just because it's going to be your center front length, and I, I remember it being that. I might be wrong though, but we can always adjust it. Let's see if I was right. Close enough. And we're going to just see, save this later. And again, I'll do all the finishing touches to it. But as for manipulation or, or drafting or anything, we're kind of done. We just have to do the seam allowance and pattern information later. But let's do that when we're finished. OK, so we're essentially done with the front piece. Let's head on to the back. And let's uh, proceed in the same way. So we'll cut out our princess seam first. So what I want to do is I want to cut my darts out. And we can delete them away. And delete it away. And I want to, just if there's any sort of remnant of dart left, get rid of it. Tell by those drill holes. They're the telltale signs if there's any sort of dart remnant left. And now this is going to be easy. So if we look here, it's just sort of going up to the shoulder. And we don't even have to measure this because the dart is already in the center of the shoulder. So all we have to do is cut from tip to tip, pretty easy, and we're done with that. Pretty, pretty easy. Okay, now what we have to do is there's some finishing pieces left. We have to do the armhole facings and also the collar. So let's do the collar first. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab 
Let's put this over to the side. My front neck here from on my front, and I'm going to grab my back neck, and I want to use my rotate piece tool, keyboard shortcut R, and I'm going to rotate, whoa, well, got crazy, um, this around. So the lines, the shoulder lines around the neck are going to line up. Now let's see how well I did. We might need a little bit of adjustment when we zoom in. It looks pretty close. Probably another final adjustment. Uh, more zoomed in so we can be very precise. And I want to line these guys up a little bit, a little bit more. Now what you can do too is um, if you don't feel like being super uh, how should I say um, wiggly with the rotation tool you can actually use your join piece tool and this is pretty neat you don't actually have to even do any rotating with this so let me show you how it works um, I'm going to act like I want to join the shoulder seams together but what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this move pieces alongside only. Now this is not going to attach them into one, it's just going to sort of mesh them together. Now we can see this kind of kicking up here a little bit because it raises up a bit in the shoulder seam, but that's okay because we just want our neckline to be flush. So we have a nice flush neckline here. So it's looking good. We have our full neckline aligned nice and smooth so what I want to do is I want to quick protect both of these pieces and now what I can do is I can draft over them to create my neck uh, my collar seam okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my draft tool and I want to start from the center front. I don't want to start from here. I don't want to start from here. I want to start at the center front. Because remember, this is going to go around the neck and meet at the center front when it's all buttoned up, just like this. So you can see the collars meet here at the center front, at the middle of where the buttons are. Not over here, you know, not over here, but right here. So we get that nice little point to point meeting right at the center front. So we'll meet here, nope, and first I'm going to go ahead and just do the neckline exactly as is. Okay, you see there's a little bit of a, a gap, that's okay, don't worry about that. Now what I want to do is Let's say this collar is, oh, I don't know, an inch and a half uh, in width, pretty much. So to get the original distance, or sort of this marking distance, I am going to use my Alt key just to make sure. So this is going to be from point, from my last point, the last point that I made. And I want the total distance to be two, uh, one and a half inches. That's what we said it was going to be. And OK. No. Now that's going to give me a pretty good starting point for um, one and a half inches. Now I'm going to go around and keep that distance, try to keep that distance about one and a half inches from the collar. And again, right now I'm kind of just doing it by eye, but we can go back and measure. And here I'm going to start to swoop it up right there. Actually, we can click right there. So I can go back and double check to make sure that I'm keeping about a one and a half inch distance from the edge. Okay, pretty good. Now we can go a little farther or a little, uh, um, you know, it doesn't really matter just so long as it's visually pretty good and again we can double check it that was very close and again just keep this line perpendicular so you're getting that full length 
So it's good. It's looking pretty good. But again, if you needed to manipulate this a little bit, maybe you dipped in a little bit or dipped out, you can always grab your move point tool to adjust it. Okay. So let's now pull this piece out. And there is my collar piece. Okay. So looking pretty good. We have our collar. And I can go ahead and remove the protection from these pieces. And we can bring this guy back around and let's rotate him back to a better looking position. Move him back. There we are. Okay. Now we have two more pieces to do before we do our finishing up, which is our armhole. And what we're going to use is we're going to use that Create in Parallel tool. So let's start with our front armhole. And again, I always want to work clockwise, so I'm going to start at the armpit and go up to low point shoulder. One, two, and that is signifying, uh, that is signifying the edge, the beginning and end of the edge that I want to be finished with the facing. And I want to do a two inch um, width, both here and here, and hit OK. And that gives us, sure, why not? And this time, that gives us our shape of the facing. Doesn't give us the facing, gives us the shape. And let's do the same thing here. And again, since we're working clockwise this time, we're going to start at life, low point shoulder and go to the armpit. Sure. Okay. Now, this is the shape of the facing, but the facing is a separate pattern piece. So we have to do one more step and build out our shape. So I'm going to use the build piece tool or keyboard shortcut B. Um, click it to the whole area you want is green, then right click, finish drafting, and that will give you your armhole piece. All right, let's do it once more. This we might have to do in two parts because we have that line separating it, but no problem. And there we are. Now we have all of our pieces needed to complete our shirt. So let's go ahead and do the finishing. So let's start with our first, our bodice here. Let's zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing. First, let's correct the grain, and we got to go to our set baseline tool to do that. Or keyboard shortcut backslash. And I'm going to go right up that center front. I know it's not the exact center front, but um, that center front line because we want our grain line to be going like that. Now, um, we have a draft name, so we have to also right click the piece, go to attributes, and change it to something else. So front shirt is perfectly fine. And then let's add our pattern information as well. We'll just add it right down here and we'll style number one, two, three has been our favorite style number to use. Um, actually, let's, I don't want you guys to get confused uh, because every garment should get a new pattern number. So for the sake of this, we already have a few one, two, threes, I think. Um, so let's do four, five, six. Again, this is a new one. Um, it is, of course, a size 8, and we want to cut 2 out of our self fabric. Okay, and there we go. Now let's add our seam allowance right here, or keyboard shortcut S. And what we're going to do is, since we have a collar, we're going to keep the seam allowance up here a little bit smaller. Actually, we'll keep the seam allowance a little bit smaller on the armhole, too. Now, this is very common when we have smaller pieces with tighter curves that we keep the seam allowance a little bit smaller than usual. So instead of a half an inch, we're going to do a quarter inch seam allowance on the neck and armhole. So again, working clockwise, I want to go 
to the beginning and end of our neckline and let's put a 0.25. Now I do want this to be mitered and we'll hit OK. Okay. Now let's do the same thing for our armhole. 0.25 with a miter. Okay. Now the hem I want to do a little bit longer because we're going to have to hem this uh, shirt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add three quarters inch, not as much as a skirt. You know, we don't need quite that much, but a little bit longer than normal with a miter. Now everywhere else, I'm going to add in a half an inch. And half an inch here along my center front. Now let's make sure these are mitered too. I've got to do that. So I might have to go back. Oh well, don't worry about it. And um, now we're done with our front shirt. Okay? All done there. Let's move on over here since it's sort of um, attached to here. Oh, uh, I want the grain of this to align with this grain. Okay, that way it's going to match up and fall nicely when we attach it to the front shirt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this piece, but when I go to the um, set baseline tool or set baseline direction tool or keyboard shortcut slash, I'm going to use, oh, that's not going to work. Hmm. I thought it was. So what we'll do is I'm just going to, um, I'm not going to click on that piece, but I'll click right next to it. Keep it kind of nice and parallel to the line that we want to use. That looks good. All right. There we go. Now we also have to give it a better name. So front armhole facing. Excellent. And this guy needs seam allowance too. And it needs seam allowance all the way around. Now, a lot of people tend to forget the seam allowance on our facing pieces, but it is absolutely necessary. And it's going to be half an inch pretty much everywhere, but where it attaches here. So remember that um, seams that go together always have to have a matching seam allowance length. So on the inside where it attaches, we're going to keep it at 0.25. And everywhere else, we're going to keep it at half an inch. Okay. Let's add some pattern information on here. Of course, our style number will rename, remain the same. The size will remain the same. And we want to cut to self and cut to interfacing. Remember that facing usually always gets that additional layer of interfacing. Um, interfacing is added to self fabric or normal fabric to give it a little bit of stiffness and this helps the facing do its job which is to um, not only finish the armhole edge but protect the shape of it. Uh, that little added stiffness really helps it. So okay, there we are. If we want to scoot it a little bit smaller, so let's see, if we zoom in, sometimes it runs off the piece until you zoom in. No, okay. So I'm just going to grab my arrow and scoot it a little bit smaller so the whole thing is on the actual piece. So I don't want it to be kind of uh, bump off or anything like that. Okay. Now let's move on to our back piece. And the grain looks okay. Let's zoom in on it actually. If 
but I'm going to just double check to make sure the grain's okay by making sure it aligns with our center back. Yep, looks just fine. But we do indeed need to change the name. We shouldn't have sloper in it anymore. So just back shirt is fine. Now I also need to edit this text, uh, the leftover from my sloper. So what I can do is in this very same place, or right click, go to attributes when you've selected it, um, you can go to text in the box that will pop up, uh, press the little ellipses next to the text uh, description here, and you can edit what's in your text box. Now remember this is going to be on fold because we don't have a center back seam if you remember the sketch. So we need to put an on fold marker and it's only going to be a cut one. Let's move this up a little bit so it's not running in the into the grain. There, there we go. And let's put that on fold marker. Okay, and in its properties window, let's change the degrees to 90. There we are. And if you need to adjust it so it sits right on the line, of course you can with your arrow tool or make it a little bit bigger. We always want our old unfolds to be nice and visual and very, very clear. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. So let's add our seam allowance. We're going to add it the same as the front. So we're going to do quarter of an inch on the neck three quarters of an inch on the hem, and half inch everywhere else, except of course the on-fold line, which does not get seam allowance. So we'll just go all the way around, nice clockwise fashion. And this is gonna be all half an inch. and three quarters inch down here. Excellent. So there's our back. Oh, you know what? So this is back shirt, but that's not very descriptive enough. What I really want it to be, because we have two back pieces for our shirt. It's fine for the front when you only have one piece. Well, we have two, so what I really want to do is name it center back piece. So let's just make that correction real quick, and we'll finish up with uh, this guy here. So that'll be the back, and we have clicked it, so I'm already ready for changing. So we have the center back shirt, so this will be, you guessed it, the side back shirt. Now we need to add text information we don't have that text box left over. It went to the other piece. And this is going to be cut to self. Alrighty. Good, good, good. Now let's add our seam allowance. And same as before, our armhole is going to get quarter of an inch, side seam gets a half an inch, bottom gets three quarters, princess seam gets half an inch, and I'm going to go all the way here because both of these um, the princess and shoulder are going to get half an inch, so I can go all the way and finish up just like so. Okay, so we're done with our back. Let's go ahead and do the back armhole facing. Now this did a nice job in replicating the uh, baseline or grain line, so I don't need to adjust that. Looks good. I do need to name it something different.
and add our text information. And just like before, we need to cut to self and to interfacing pieces. Let's shrink it down so it fits all on the piece nicely. Pretty good. Well, C's hanging off, but don't worry because we have the seam allowance too, so it shouldn't shouldn't matter too much. All right, let's add seam allowance again. Quarter inch on the armhole. And half an inch everywhere else. I'm trying to get it to minor. Sometimes it seems to want to do it, sometimes not. Don't worry if, if it doesn't work with you. Okay, that mitered it. All right, so we're done. Almost done. We just got a couple more pieces to uh, go ahead. Let's do the collar and we'll finish up with that interfacing piece. I'm going to put my collar down here and let's zoom in on it. Now, for a collar like this, if we go ahead and look at the back, it's all one piece. And what happens is we put the center back on fold. So the grain is going along the center back on fold line. Because um, if we look at our draft, right, this is only half the collar. But we're going to cut it to make sure that it is one. So this is an on fold line. And what do we know about on fold lines? Well, they don't get seam allowance and the grain has to align with the on-fold uh, line. So I'm going to go ahead and change the grain to go ahead and align the way I want it to uh, with that center back line. I'm going to change the name to collar and I'm going to add um, a half inch seam allowance everywhere but the center back line here and again it's going to be quarter inch all the way around except for of course the unfold line now if we want to be specific I really want it to be mitered here because that's going to make these points nice and sharp so you really do that's one place where it really is kind of important now let's put an unfold marker here what I'm going to do to make this a little bit easier is I'm just going to rotate it so that center back line is kind of straight. So when I enter in the 90 degrees to um, turn my onfold text, it'll give me that nice sort of upright. Angle. All right, let's do it here. Otherwise, I'd have to play around with angles till I got um, it correct. Okay, so again, I can adjust this because I want it to sit right here with my arrow, or if I want to adjust it a little bit, um, or right in the properties, I can have it sit, let's say, down there. Well, let's add a little bit more to that, bump it up a little bit more. Okay, and let's push it back a little bit more oh, I went the wrong direction sorry <laughs> gotta look at the measuring box okay so now it's close enough to just sort of adjust with the arrow There we go. You might just, I like to adjust with the arrow, but it's good to know how to do it with the properties box too. Usually the arrow is, is just enough. All right, let's not forget our pattern piece information. Every single piece, no matter how small, gets pattern information. So it needs a style number, it needs a size. And what is the coloring information for this collar gonna be? Well, if you remember, 
when we make collars, so this is going to be sort of the whole thing right here, but we need two layers, and how we attach it, we sort of sandwich the neckline in between the layers of the collar. So we're actually going to cut to self, and um, we're also going to cut at least one interfacing. Now this really depends on your fabric, um, how stiff you want the collar to be based on how stiff your fabric is. If your, call, if your fabric is very, very loose and kind of wiggly and limp, but you want a very, very stiff collar, you might cut two interfacing. If it's pretty stiff already and potentially kind of bulky, you might only cut one interfacing. So one or two, doesn't matter, but it should have something. Now let's shrink that back down. So it fits. Now let's do our last piece. Our interfacing piece. I'm just gonna rotate it up. You guys know how I like the patterns to be pretty neat. And let's say, let's start to organize these guys. here. Now, um, the way we attach this, if you remember from uh, the buttonhole video, or the button placket video, I should say, um, is we really only need seam allowance on one edge. This is one of those pieces that is a little bit different than others, um, because we're going to attach it here along this edge. This seam allowance goes to this then we sort of fold it back, press it to finish this, and then we fold it once more to create the button placket. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add a half an inch seam allowance on one edge. Okay, now of course we do need a better name for this, so we're gonna call it the button placket interfacing. And yes, even this guy gets um, pattern info. Let's do it, it'll be teeny tiny, but we'll fit it in there. be too long if I put that in a two because of course we have two sides of the button placket one for the right half one for the um, other half one of them is going to get button holes one of them is going to get buttons but we have two of them shrink it down to fit and there we are now that is our finished uh, pattern draft and again let's just review uh, we just drafted this shirt, okay? Hooray! So uh, once you're done, as always, save as, especially if you're working for your bodice sloper, because you're going to want to keep uh, your bodice sloper. And uh, honestly, you should have saved as as soon as you opened. You shouldn't rely on OptiText to work and not crap on in you. So that was bad on my part. Don't be like me. Be smarter than me. Um, save as, again, because you want to keep your original sloper as is because we'll be doing, you know, multiple drafts. And you're going to save as. Again, um, when you do save as, it'll make a new file keeping your original bodice sloper as is. And you're going to name it your name bodice. Or you could just, your name shirt. It's a shirt at this point. And save it. And send it on over. All right, guys. So um, this will progress as the sh uh, skirt. So next week we'll start on a student design shirt. So think about what you might want to do. 
Uh, the requirements are to modify the sloper somehow uh, in regards to the darts, so either putting in seams or using dart rotation or changing the number of darts in some way. Um, you're also going to be required to have a button placket um, and a collar. And we're going to go over a few other different collar styles um, and also sleeve manipulation. So um, what I'll do, we're not going to draft the sleeve, but I'm going to go ahead and um, by next week, or actually probably I'll even do this before I post this video, um, uh, put a sleeve sloper online that you can use. Okay? Alright guys, see you later.